Welcome back DIYers. Today's video, we're tackling the trim on this project to finally get this whole house project painting done. And if you didn't see that video where I did the painting of the body of the house, I'll have a link down below and one at the end of this video for you to go back and you can watch that if you like. Now, if you watch any other painting videos where they're painting their house, whether it be a DIYer doing it like me or even a professional, a lot of them, they'll spray the house and either A, they spray the trim and the house all one color, which I didn't want, I wanted two-tone, or B, they spray it and then they come back and cut in with a brush and just paint the surfaces. And they typically only paint the face of the soffit and not underneath. And I want the face painted, I want underneath painted, and I want this little trim board right here painted also. I don't want just the face painted, as I said. I want this edge painted. And they have a name for that, and honestly, I can't remember what it is. If one of you out there watching happens to know what it is, leave it in the comments down below. But I want the face painted, and I want this edge painted. I want the same thing, like I said, up there, and I want the same for the corner trim. I don't want just the face of the corner trim painted. I also want this edge painted here, too. Now, like I said, I could have gone through and cut it in, as they call it, with a brush and been real careful and then roller this, but I don't want any brush or roller marks. I want the whole house to look sprayed. So that's why I'm gonna go through these extra details in order to do that. So the first detail I had to take care of was on the window trim. As you can see, I got this primered and then I got this body of the house paint color on here also. So if you watch the video where I painted the body of the house, you'll know that I taped off and masked off and plastic off the windows and just kind of put it on the trim. I didn't care that I was going to get paint on there and not all of it covered because I'm going to come back and redo it anyway. But what I didn't realize is that in doing so, it left a hard line that you could actually feel. And when I had to go back and paint the body of the house a second time, and if you're wondering why I had to do that, go back and watch the video and you'll see. Um, I didn't get it taped off exactly where these were. I just kind of taped it anywhere. And so when I peeled that tape off, there was actually a sharp line within the paint. And so I knew if I sprayed the face of this, those lines would show up. So I wanted those out of there. And how I did it is I used a scraper and a fine sanding sponge. And basically, I just took the sanding sponge and sanded along that edge until it started to blend in to where you can kind of see down in through here how the sharp line kind of gets faded and blended in with the texture of the rest of it and you can't see it and you can't feel it either when you do this and for those that had a line out here where it was already painted same thing i just sanded it till it blended out and if there were some areas that i needed to i just took my scraper along and scraped them out and then came back behind with the sander and sanded it now you may notice in doing that i exposed some of the bare wood and went through the primer but i'm not too worried about that i've got a plan for that and when it comes time to it you'll find out now with that part done Let's move on to the finer nuances that I need to do in order to get this trim all painted. And if you're wondering, I went behind and wiped all this down with water to get the sanding dust off. All right, to get a professional looking outcome, remember, it's in the details and the prep. And here's part of those details and prep. So I'm gonna have to painstakingly mask off and I'm gonna use uh, frog tape, blue frog tape, and mask off right down along the window. Now there's kind of a sharp line where the siding ends caulking and then the trim. And I'm gonna try and get at least the minimum is on the line of the siding. But what I really wanna try and do is get the corner where the two meet. But we'll get as close as we can and it'll still look good. The hardest part about this is because it's lap siding. And so I gotta make sure I get underneath there really well. Cause if I don't, when I go to spray, You'll be surprised that paint will find its way back underneath there and you'll see it when you take the tape off. And I'm using my little tadpole cutter so I get straight lines when I cut. And then I'm using a flexible putty knife to get it up underneath there really well. And just like that, one side's done. Now the bottom edge and the top edge are gonna be real easy because it's flat and I don't have to worry about going around the lap. It's gonna be the edges. So I just gotta do that for six more windows. And then I'll show you what we got to do next to get this ready. Okay, I got around all three windows on this side. Next thing I need to do is go down here at the corner trim. And here, I need to do the same thing. Go right down this edge, all the way down. And then 
when I'm done with that, I need to go all the way across this top right here. And we get that done, then we move on to something a little more interesting. Same thing, blue painter's tape, frog tape. And what I've discovered is I use my finger, push it up under here where I want it, push on this edge and get this down here set, and then come up and get this side. Because if this side here isn't quite stuck all the way up underneath here, it's not a big a deal as it is over here. Because when I was doing it before, where I was using this to get it up in there and then doing it, I kept getting a little wrinkle right here. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is, is the time from when I painted the body of the house to now has been probably about three weeks. I did that on purpose because I wanted to make sure this was good and cured before I start putting tape on it because I don't want this to peel the paint off when I pull the tape off. And when I painted it, we was having cold days, warm days, cold days, and warm days. So I wanted enough time for this to get good and cured before I started sticking tape on it. All right, as you can see, I've already got started across there and I got my scaffolding system set up. And if you're wondering what this is, this is a little giant ladders, all three of these, and they're little giant scaffolding system. And I'll have links down below for you. And this is gonna be much faster than up and down the ladder, one at a time. be surprised at how unstraight this trim board is. You don't notice it until you're trying to put tape down it. In case you're wondering, this is a brand new roll of tape. That way I didn't have to worry about running out. Got around the window, got across the top. Now, paper. What I'm going to do is put this paper, it's six inch paper, down along here and make sure I get it tucked up underneath each one of these laps really well. And you're asking why? Well, because I'm going to put plastic over all this and all I want to do is just tape the plastic to this paper in just a flat smooth line and not have to worry about getting underneath all of it and just being a big pain in the butt. So I think this is an easier way. Okay, I got everything set up. As you can see, I got paper down this side, around the windows and the far side. You may not be able to see, but I got little pieces of tape taped up along the top there. And I got this plastic. It's basically just painter's plastic, nine foot by 400 feet. As you're gonna see, I'm gonna put tape the plastic up with these little spots here. I'm gonna come back and lay one big long one. I'm gonna do that all the way down. And then when I get it attached all the way up, then you'll see how I'm gonna take care of the next part. When I paint, that plastic is stuck to the paper and I shouldn't get any spray back under here. Okay, got this all taped. Now, what I'm gonna do, take my Ulfa knife, it's got a brand new blade. And let's make a cut along here and down each side, tape this where it comes loose here i'll just fold it down under and tape it across and all i'm doing when i'm pushing up underneath here is just making sure i grab paper and then the windows will be taken care of except for the glass itself okay one window and then i've got to do in here but i got two other windows and as far as the bottom goes i'm gonna throw some boards on there and they'll help hold that down so i'll get this side done and we'll move on all right, next I need to do around this brick. And for that, I have a tape that is made for masonry. It's a 3M product. Basically, I'll mask off all this. What I have to be uh, cognizant of or careful is when I put my tape in here, I gotta make sure I push it down into the uh, grout groove, if you will, so that I don't get paint bleeding underneath. And that's probably the hardest part of doing this. And this particular tape sticks really well to brick. I will tell you that. 
So I'll go around and do all this and then again plastic will go on this and cover this up. All right, I got this one window left to do and basically I'm just taping with my frog tape around the edge and then once I do that it'll get plastic over it and the plastic will tape to the frog tape and then it'll be all covered and then I got a couple little things left to do and we'll get some paint on this. I'm actually leaving just a touch of the window frame untaped so that my caulking gets paint on it. Okay, I painted part of the trim in one section and I'm getting ready to do the second half. But one thing I want to point out is I did use frog tape. You can see right along the line, some white primer poking out underneath. And basically what that is, is, is the primer paint hit that frog tape for the paint blocking powder or film or whatever it is that's on the tape could activate some of the primer got under there as it was activating. So when I go to do the second half, I got a little trick I'm gonna try and see if I can prevent that. And I'll show you what that is. Taking a dry rag and going along the edge and I'm taking a very lightly dampened rag and I'm wiping right along the frog tape to activate the paint blocking powder so it swells up. So when I primer, it'll stay right there and I won't get bleed under. See how it works. When I'm painting the house, I've got an extension on here. And you gotta be careful when you use this about spits. And what a spits mean is, is as the paint's going through, when I let off of the trigger, the paint stops at the gun, but it keeps going through the, the extension. So what you'll see is as I'm painting and I let go, you may see it spits some paint out, and that's what spits are. So, and I'll tell you how I'm gonna try and avoid those here in just a second. When I'm painting this edge, instead of coming from the top down, I'm coming from the bottom up and the reason is is coming from the bottom it forces me to get down and I turn the gun upward so that the paint gets up underneath here. If I did it from the top down what had happened is, is I got to here I'd be lazy and just let it go and underneath here wouldn't get paint and it's the same thing here for the windows. Now to help control the spits what I'll do is, is I'll go up over and down and in either on the ground or on my plastic. So if it spits, it spits to the plastic. And then the other thing you're gonna see is I got a little lip right here. If I just paint here, it won't get covered. So you've got to tilt the gun and spray that way. For getting up here, I'm getting on this uh, work platform. And you're gonna see me tilt the gun up and that's to get up in here. Then you're gonna see me take the gun level and come back and get the rest. Now I'm only I'm using a 215. What that means is it gets a four inch spray pattern at 12 inches away. So I'm doing that to decrease the overspray, which just means I gotta come back an extra trip. And I'm gonna paint from the top down. And then when I get the face done, I'm just gonna come along here and paint that bottom edge. And then we'll come through and paint this and what I'll do is I'll paint this trim board here, come down so it gets that, and come back up 
and paint the underneath side. And when I'm on the work platform, the other thing I'm going to do is paint down on the top of the window so it gets good and covered. The last thing I'm going to paint will be this back side. And I'll come right along here and do this. And that'll be the last thing I do. And I am going to wear a respirator, but I'm not wearing a monkey suit. It's just too hot. The other thing I'm going to do is test my spray pattern before I get started. Make sure I got a nice even spray pattern and no tails. Good. Now, I'm going to spray all the top all the way down and do inside here next. I'm going to go high so all the overspray falls down before I do my door jam. Okay, when I paint this door, I'm going to start on this side, go up, over, and down, one continuous motion, so I don't have, so I don't have start and stop marks. And I'll do the whole doorway that way. Well, we finally got it all painted, trim's all done, got the masking and the paper off and everything. It looks pretty good from a distance, actually from a distance it looks great. If you remember, I went around to all the frog tape edge and wiped them down with a wet towel to uh, try and activate the edge. Well, it kind of worked in some areas and it was an upper failure in others. So let me show you. I don't know if you can see, but it worked pretty good right there. I got just a sliver of white primer sticking under. Then you got these areas where it didn't do worth a lick. And over here where it bled underneath it really bad. So the only thing I can think of as to why it worked better in some areas than others was how wet I got the tape. So in some areas, the rag must have been a lot wetter than in others, and it did a better job of activating the edge of the tape to block the paint out. Whereas in those areas I showed you, I must not have had any water on it. Two other things I found, it's a little aggravating because I did everything I thought I could to avoid this, and that is, like right here on this face, I got some edges, a spot right here. And so far, this is the only one I found. I'll be looking as I do the touch-ups for any others. And this last one really aggravates me because I did everything I could to avoid this. And that is right inside this edge. This one's a little better, you can see. But that little strip of, of the base color I didn't get, that is really aggravating because when I painted, I made sure I started at the bottom. I pointed my gun up and I pointed into this and sprayed. But this goes to show you need to be more around this way to get it. And even then, because it's tucked up back behind there, it probably wouldn't have worked. But that's okay. I'll go through and take the extra step and fix that. Let me show you how I'm going to do it. And then we'll do a final reveal of the whole house. Okay, we're ready to do the touch up on all the brown parts first. Now, originally I was just going to take a small paintbrush and paint in behind here and do it that way. But after thinking a little bit, um, I decided to change my mind because I'm worried I might screw up and hit the base part of the house with that brown. And then I got to worry about painting over that. So instead, I'm going to take some frog tape and tape this off. And I'll show you just what I'm talking about. So uh, I'll just take my frog tape right next to the line like that. A little bit of white showing through. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do there. Now it doesn't take too long. Now, what I'm hoping for is two things. One, I'm gonna get this back in here painted and not have to worry about getting it on the house part. But two, it might solve my little bit of touch up that I got right along that edge there. Because basically I kept the white part exposed where it was feasible to do so. And so when I paint, we'll see. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Well, the paint's just going to run under this like it already did. Well, I'm just going along wiping the tape with the damp rag to hopefully activate the paint block powder. So this time, I don't have that issue. I did up there because after a closer inspection, I saw that I actually needed brown painting for touch-up versus the base color. Now, this area here, I just completely forgot to paint it. Same thing over here. This part here, again, after closer inspection, I actually found 
that the brown needed to extend a little further actually to where a lot of that white is so on this side here that's more of the base color that needs to be touched up so i got everything taped off i got it all wiped down a little blue pieces of tape on the trim itself means there's some light areas there i need to touch up and for the little fine details right along this edge here I take a little bit of brush like this and just go real slow it's a little tedious but it's the details and like that we got her all done Okay, I got my paint all stirred up. I got my brush all wetted down. Always wet your brush before you paint because it makes cleanup a lot easier. I've gone through and wiped down the edges of the uh, tape with my finger. I've gone with a rag and wiped it down. We'll see how it works. Got my brush loaded up and we paint. So I make sure I get real close to the side here to get up in there and you can see it's a good thing I got the tape. Otherwise I've got paint everywhere. Now before the paint dries, I go ahead and peel the tape off and we'll see what we got. Not as good as I wanted. Good thing I've got this done first and I can go back and do the touch up after. Some areas that come out really nice, other areas not so good. Some areas really bad. Naturally I was hoping for better results, but that's okay. When this dries, I still gotta go back through and do touch ups on the base color and I'll hit all those with it. I'll go through and hit this with the brush. Now for these areas, I don't need that big thick brush. All I need is this little brush because all I need to do is get just around, the, just along the edges. Well, all in all, not too bad. Did a fairly good job. Didn't bleed very much. I'll have very minimal touch-ups to do with the base color. Okay, this next part, which is the last of the touch-ups on the brown I have to do, has to do with me being anal, OCD, whatever, don't care. But I never have liked the white sticking out past the paint here. And what that is, is when I recalked all this, the caulking bled under the tape, just like the paint did. But I've never liked this little white edge showing along here. And I've got it along the eaves where I masked off. And again, the paint bled under it and around on the other side of the trim of the house also. Okay, so all I do is take this little brush of paint and just dab right along the edge. You can't see where I did it up there. All along there was done. Here's this area now that it's done. And the garage. Well, for the final touch up of the base color, I'm just using this little brush here little thing of paint and I just go along real slow touch up all the white spots now that's a little tedious but this actually goes pretty quick and the trick is keep enough paint on your brush so that it flows as you go this day has finally come we've got this house done. that's right the outside of this house is done now here are some before and after pictures of it. Take a look at the before and afters and see the transformation that we've done here. On a DIY scale of one to 10, I make this an eight. I got a couple of runs and a couple of little offset boards that keep it from being a 10, but an eight is plenty good in my book. It turned out really well. And you'll have to look for these mistakes to see them. And most people won't even see the mistakes that were made. And if we take a look at the front of the house here, Garage door before and after is nicely painted. We even went the extra step and painted the top and bottoms of each section so that when the doors open and close, you can't see the white paint. How about that gable vent? Remember how rotted the corner miters were on it? And we replaced that with new boards. Miters are now nice and tight. It's painted well and caulked up. It looks wonderful. The soffit and fascia looks well. And remember how we replaced the caulking between the garage jam and the brick? And now it's all painted, how nice that turned out and looks. And how we sanded down and repainted the whole jam, how nice that came out. So remember the front door, how it was all dented up and faded. We put new hardware on, fixed all the dents and painted. Looked like a brand new door was put on. And all that time spent sanding above the entryway of the front and back door. Well, it still looks like plywood, it still looks a lot better. A nice uh, two-tone trim that goes around it, makes it look really nice. Along with the new entry light that we got that matches the door trim. How we replaced the caulking on the front corner trims of the house and replaced it. It came out really nice, especially once it was painted. And we replaced and repaired the caulking on the back side of the trim and it came out really nice also. And take a look at the mitered corners on all the fascia trim. Most of those were kind of rotted out and we dug them out, cleaned them up, and packed them full of caulking and I went the extra step to make sure the caulking looked like a square corner. And speaking of fascia trim, we also took the caulking out of all the scarf joints and replaced them. 
Got them painted up. You can't hardly see where those are either. And on the back side of the fascia, where they didn't get it very well painted, it's now got a very nice coat of paint on the back side. How about the window trim? Remember back how the miters didn't fit well and most of them were all rotted at the bottom? Now it's all brand new trim. The miters are very tight. They fit together real flush and nice. And also remember how the bottom boards on all the windows tilted outward. Now we fixed that and they all set flush. We replaced all the caulking around the windows. So we move on to the corner trim. The bottoms of those were rotted out. We replaced those with brand new ones. And there wasn't, before there wasn't caulking between the trim and the house. And now there is and it sealed that little chamber off. And how about the siding itself? Remember, we replaced some of it on each side of the house. Now that it's all painted, you can't tell what was replaced and what wasn't. It blends in very nicely. Unless you really know what you're looking for, you might be able to tell that some of it was replaced. Now let's talk about cost. I didn't really keep track of the cost of everything, but let's look at it this way. They say between five and 10% increase in value by painting the outside of your house. And I know some of the things I did aren't necessarily gonna add value, and I'm okay with that. But let's make math easy. $200,000 house, 5%, $10,000. There's no way I spent 10000 or even more than 10000 to do this. If you take into account the paint, the primer, the caulking, the masking tape, the plastic, the paper that I used to mask everything off, the corner trim boards, the window trim boards, the siding boards, and if we even throw in the three sprayers I bought, I'm going to say I spent somewhere between five and $6,000. Let's say it's six thousand. I still gained four thousand dollars on the project by doing it myself. You throw out the sprayers. That's probably about twenty-five hundred bucks. That puts you at about thirty-five hundred to do this. That's a pretty good return on your money. And in some areas, you maybe get ten percent, even better. So knowing that, now would you go out and paint your own house? Let me know in the comments if you feel like you want to go out and paint your own house. You can do this. Every one of you watching can do this. It's not that hard. Break it down into small chunk sized pieces as you get done with each piece you just move on like i did before you know it your whole house is painted so if you didn't see part one of the final painting series i'll have a link up here if you want to see any part of the house painting series itself i'll have a playlist over here you can click on or i'll have it down in the links below and we'll see you on the next project and until then happy diy -ing.